Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Today I'm going to be talking about the GSSR that's coming for New Year's. I promised in my last video for Fate um, that I would be talking about it, and that's what I'm going to be doing today. So, if you end up liking this video, you can leave a like. We're going to have a lot to talk about, <laughs> so hopefully it's not too long. I will try and condense it the best I can. Um... You can also leave a like if you end up liking this video. I think I already mentioned that, but that just shows how my brain is. Comment, tell me how you feel about this specific banner. Are you pulling? Are you not pulling? Who do you wish to get? Who do you hope not to get? Stuff like that. And you can subscribe to me if you want more videos featuring me. So let's get into it. First things first, it should always be mentioned because I always get comments about it. Um, yes, you do need 15 paid quartz. You cannot use paid quartz that you get in the game. You technically can't even use all the quartz that you buy from Fake Grand Order. So, to explain 15 paid quartz, um, this is the way that the game shop has always worked, and I think it's stupid, but whatever. Um, you are technically buying 12 paid quartz, and then the game gives you 6 bonus quartz for how much you paid. So, for this pack specifically. So even though this pack gives you, even though you're technically paying for 18 quarts, the game is considering it, oh no, you were paying for the 12 and we gave you 6. So those, that doesn't count towards paid quarts. So in order to actually, for the cheapest value, you would need to buy this pack, and then buy this pack three times. And if you wanted to be slightly more expensive, I guess you could buy this pack once and then this pack. Um, you would technically get more quartz this way, but it's up to you, I guess, money-wise. That's, again, if you're being super cheap about it, of course. Um, and there's plenty of reasons for someone to would rather go this route than going any other route. So, something to keep in mind. So, you can't, you cannot take advantage of this uh, great deal <laughs> if you are free to play. That's just the way of the game, unfortunately. Um, but with that out of the way, let's actually talk about the units. Now, I am going to try and just pick out a couple units from each banner that I can see is good. Later on, I am going to specifically talk about units I don't want to get from the GSSR. Um, and you can take that to mean they're bad, and if they're <laughs> if they're bad, I won't say anything. But if they're specifically good, and I'm saying I don't want to pull them, I will give you my reasons why. So let's start with Saber. Um, Nero, I think, is a very solid uh, single target art Saber. She also is a great support. Her All her skills kind of can target anyone on the team. She has a pretty good attack rate up. That also gives crit star. She has a pretty good heal that also gives defense. And her best skill is her skill one once it's um, post uh, strengthening. Because it gives 45% NP gain and then it also gives 30% NP gauge to whoever gets that skill. And later on when they add Chen Gong, she ends up being an extremely good support to go with her. But also in general for arts, um, NP gain ends up being very useful. Um, and also for challenge quest, I have one at NP2, and she's been fantastic. Um, I love her specifically for challenge quest. I think she's great. I don't think enough people give her credit besides the skill one, but it's whatever. Uh, next unit we have is Musashi. I wanted to bring her up just because I think she's another solid um, single target um, <laughs> arts unit who's a five star. Um, she is single target. She is Buster. The one thing that I think a lot of people end up finding annoyed about her is that the game continuously continues to buff her. She does obviously have some issues, and her debuffs have specifically not really fixed those issues, but it's also kind of one of those things of like, well, the, the issues that they're trying to fix aren't really issues. <laughs> So she ends up getting buffed over other sabers who badly need the buff. For example, she gets buffed over... She gets buffed before one, two, three, four of these servants. All of these sabers here could use a buff over her, and she got a buff before them. Eventually, Siegfried does get a buff, and so does Okita. But the point is, is that when she got a buff, it was kind of like, I don't know why you're buffing Musashi. She's already pretty good. Even if she does have flaws. Every unit has a flaw somewhere. Except for maybe Arjuna Alter, but whatever. Um, I would so she's someone to kind of look out for. You can't actually pick who you summon for. It's kind of a grab bag for sure. But if I got her, I would be pretty happy. Um, next we have archers. Every single one of these archers, except for maybe Moriarty, who's a little bit more specific to one type of unit. He's really more built to be alongside it. He's very weird, but anyway, of these four other limited archers, they're all great for various reasons. Um, 
Jean and Saber over here, who are both summer units, are fantastic art units. She's able to NP loop with arts, pretty good. And later on, when Castoria becomes a big thing, you would love to have her. She is just a crazy, crazy single target arts unit. She hits so many times on her NP. Um, with the right setup, you can make her <laughs> NP loop by herself <laughs> with a single target attack. <laughs> I've done it before. It's really fun. Uh, she's insanely good. Um, probably one of the best built summer units in terms of survivability. I don't. Yet she hasn't needed a buff or like some summer units you can look at and go like, hey, I think you use a little bit of a buff. She came out year one, doesn't need a buff at all. Perfectly solid the way she is, I would say. Uh, next, you got Gilgamesh and you have Ishtar. Both of them pretty very good at farming. Gilgamesh in general is, I think, sh the stronger of the two. But I think I like <laughs> Ishtar more for, more than farming. I can never personally get Ishtar to kill a f to kill a specific nodes that I need her for. But I also don't have a Merlin, so that's something that definitely holds her back. But <laughs> I'm personally holding her back, I guess, at that point. But either way. Both of them very good. If you end up getting any of these four, I would say you're pretty solid. And Moriarty, let me specifically look. He does eventually get some buffs. I think he is a single target. He is in fact damage to one enemy, reduces defense. Uh, my brother is a big fan of him. He does have this ability that turns your own party evil. It increases their own MP damage for 20%. Um, but it does cause you to lose 10 crit stars, but it also charges his own MP gauge and it's 50%. Like I said, Actually, now that I think about it, now that I see that charge, I would say he's actually pretty damn solid. Um, post a buff, of course. Um, I do actually think he's cool and stuff, so. Actually, I, out of out of all these, I think Archer's just pure nonstop. Actually, yeah. If you get any of the ones in Archer, you should be pretty happy. And I feel the same goes for if you get any of the people in Lancer, except for maybe Brunhilda, because I think she needs a bit of a buff compared to the others. Um... Erish Cargill is a similar to Ishtar, except for she, I think her skills are a little bit better. Some will argue that the 50% um, attack up that's on a constant loop on 3 is better for Ishtar, but I personally prefer Erish Cargill's uh, skill set. Um, that's just me, though. If you want pure raw power, it's probably Ishtar, but in terms of usability, I like Erish Cargill. Um, Skahawk, fantastic unit, continues to be a fantastic unit. Eventually, she gets her own... Um, Festival of, uh, of Sorts, Gawfest, um, where she gets a buff finally. She doesn't get a buff for a very long time, um, because she doesn't really need it, in my opinion. The buff they give her is actually very good and does help fix the one problem I had with her, which is that her buffs were never 100%, but that changes post-buff um, in two years, basically. But still, very good unit, and she is a quick uh, unit, so she goes great with Sk Skahawk Scotty. Um, Tamamo no Mei, aka Summer Tamamo. Um, <laughs> she's an anti-male dancer. Very good. Very nice to look at. Solid unit, I would say. Uh, next we got Ryder. Ryder's a pretty good mixture of stuff. Um, as much as I love my boy Iskandar, he's an extremely powerful unit, but he needs a lot of setup to get the full power breath out of. Um, so it ends up being that, um... Uh, Summer Saber Altar ends up being a little bit of an easier sell for most people. And the same thing kind of goes for Ivan the Terrible. Ivan the Terrible, I think, is a unit not a lot of people talk about because his name is Ivan the Terrible and he's a Lost Belt King. But he is a very good Lost Belt King, I feel. Um, not talked about very much, though. Still very good, though, if you end up getting him. <sighs> Pastor, okay. Of these, the big ones are obviously Merlin and Skahawk uh, Scotty. Uh, Ilya is a perfectly solid single target um, caster. There's not a lot of need for single target casters. And honestly, if you have Queen Asheba, she can deal a lot of damage. Or if you have Songzong, she's able to kind of deal a lot of... You don't really need Ilya. But if you have Ilya, then... Okay, you have a very... <laughs> you have a very decent... Um single target caster um not the worst of the world but also kind of you won't end up using her very much i feel um skahawk scotty is currently who you use for the quick meta if you get her the only thing negative i would say about her is that her np in general is very bad i think you you almost never really use it because of how terrible it is 
Um, so she's really best for grinding, and I think for actual long matches, that's where someone like Merlin is way better. Merlin is the buster support. He makes buster deal dumb damage. Um, but he's also very good in the long game because he has ways of like making you the entire team invincible and he has like a heal on his NP and stuff. Um, very good unit. In terms of AoE, you have Leonardo da Vinci and you have um, Summer uh, Nero. And Summer Nero is pretty good because she can actually lose type advantage. So she can actually hurt riders and she ends up being very strong for I think AoE casters. Um, and she is a constant bonus servant. I think the only one here that I don't have a lot of experience with is Leonardo da Vinci, and it's because not a lot of people use Leonardo da Vinci, but she is very cool. I do like looking at her. I wouldn't feel too bad if I got Leonardo, <laughs> um, but obviously there are more... When you compare her to the... the when, you, when you see the mountain of good-ass units Caster has, that's where you kind of got to go... I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, da Vinci. You just don't stack compared to them. Um, and even, I would don't think she actually stacks next to Nero very much as well. But I digress. Uh, next we got Assassin. <sighs> Assassin's tough for me, because I really feel like the only unit of worth getting out of Assassin is King Asan. And then the rest you get because I think they're very cute girls. Cleo, I think, is a very solid unit, but... Literally, the AoE assassin thing can be done by so many units much better. Um, Shudan, I think, is the same boat where she's an AoE buster unit, and I don't see a lot of use for that kind of unit for the most part. At least, I, let me double check to make sure she's buster. She's arts. Mm, okay. But only a single hit. Actually, she could be very good for doing all these debuffs. Now that I remember, I was like, I'm trying to remember, why the hell is shooting good? And the reason is she gives a lot of these debuffs. Um, but it's kind of like... Depends on the content you're doing. Um, Semiramis, at the same, in the same kind of breath as Cleo, is someone who is in theory good that I never see anyone use or talk about, really. Um, Mysterious Heroine X... She kind of needs more buff. She needs more than what she. I think she. I think she actually has been buffed in every single one of her skills. Just let me just double check. Reduce all enemies' defense for three turns. Um, chance to stun all enemies for one turn after one turn. Grant self invincibility for one turn. Gains crit stars. Increases his own critical rate generation against saber enemies for. Three. That's the problem with her is that she's only good against sabers. If you're fighting a saber face enemy, who is also a saber. <laughs> then she does a buttload of damage, but if at any point they are not any of those things, I think she does a little bit less damage than you would like from her. Um, doesn't mean she's bad, it just means that I don't see a lot of reason for her when King of Song can do what she does, but with crazy gorilla man strength. And there's also another thing to kind of take advantage of this, is I guess Kama is coming later this year. So I wouldn't invest too heavy in an assassin until you see how those summons go for her. That's how I feel, at least. <sighs> Next, we got Berserker. Uh, we got Mama Raiko, who is great for farming. I think she ends up being the best out of these, for specifically for that reason. Until Arjuna Alter shows up and completely destroys the Berserker class, becoming the only Berserker you would ever use. She's currently that for, and <laughs> for North America. Um... The rest of these, I think Kentoki ends up being pretty solid, um, but it kind of takes a while because he needs a lot of buffs. Actually, I take that back. I for <laughs> um, I, I thought that they had buffed. Okay, this is what they buffed. This is pretty good. He still needs, I think, a buff in this because he has monstrous strength, so he only gets 50% for one turn. This MP gauge charge is very good, especially for Berserker. There's no denying that. A natural body increase on offensive buffs resistance for three turns recovers on HP. This could be better. I think we can all agree that this could be better. Um, but Japan loves Kintoki, so I wouldn't be surprised if he got more buffs pretty soon. Um, Mysterious Hero and X Alter is, I think, in the same boat as Mysterious Hero and X, where she's very good against specifically Saber class servants and not anything else. Um, the less. <laughs> Oh, poor Hijikata. I have Hijikata MP2. Hijikata eventually does get this buff and gives himself guts. 
but before then he ends up being so terrible. His entire kit is based around this move, which is having the lowest HP possible. But we don't get this buff for an extremely long time, so he doesn't give himself he doesn't give himself guts at all. Um, so what ends up happening is that he's an extremely berserker playstyle. But if you mess up once, you can't do anything. <laughs> you can't you can't do anything at all. Um, the good thing about his other guts is that it is stackable with other guts. But yeah, like I said, he could be a little bit better. He kind of depends on a lot of things. It's a lot of risk for not a lot of reward, at least currently. We'll see if he gets any more buffs. Finally, we have rulers. Um, Amakasu Shiro is very good for uh, farming. He can be pretty good, at least. Um, both Shi Huang Di and Sherlock Holmes are good for challenge quest type of con content. They're great at boss um, boss fights of sorts. Dantes is, I think, currently the best quick. Um, the quick, the best quick unit at farming, but only if he's NP2. I think he actually needs NP2 to get f the full loop combo going. Um, Jean is everyone's favorite beat stick for Buster. She's extremely strong. She continues to be extremely strong, and she can still probably easily take down any content in the game um, as long as you give her a Merlin. Um, now we have Alter Ego. I think Melt is the best of the Alter Egos. Um, Mokita Soju is very good for, I guess, when Guda Guda comes around. Um, but I think they really screwed her over by giving her a Buster NP when she has a qu so quick, clearly a quick deck in a lot of ways. I think she's the only Okita in the entire game that is not a um, quick unit. She's a Buster unit, so. Kiara is actually pretty solid from what I remember. She does have insane buffs that make her pretty good. Um, but I think they're not enough in some cases. I remember trying specifically to use her a little while ago and I just never could get it to work. But I think it's also because I need Tamamo and I don't have Tamamo. I think once the arts meta shows up with Castoria, she becomes much better. But in the current state of the game, not the greatest. Um, Summer BB, BB B Ballin. She's great. That's all you need to know. If you get her, be happy. And for Foreigner, both of these units are very good. Hakasoi is very good for um, being an arts AoE. And Abby is great for being a single target. I think she's anti Foreigner. Is that what she is? No, she just is able to reduce crit. She's very good, though. Um, it's the basic thing about her. Um, so, yeah. That's the GSSR in a nutshell. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of good units on this banner. There's more good than there are bad, I would say. Um, and for me personally, the units I don't want to get are Male Arthur, uh, <laughs> Sigurd. I don't want to get Shiki. I think Shiki actually kind of sucks. Is maybe depending on who you on what day, I would say Shiki is maybe one of the worst five stars in the game. And the reason is is that I really don't like. Um, her playstyle. I don't think it has really much to do with the unit itself. I just don't find her playstyle very fun. I prefer the assassin free-to-play version of Shiki much more than I do the five-star, but that's just me. Um, I wouldn't want to get Ilya just because I don't think she's... <sighs> uh, yeah, I can't really think of like too many uses I would personally have for Ilya. I have plenty of single-target casters, and Ilya would just be another one of those. Um, for Assassin, it's huge. I don't want to get Cleo. I should also mention, I don't want to get Artoria because I have, like, her at MP5, so the idea of getting another one would be heartbreaking. And the same token, I don't want another Ishtar because I don't need her at MP2. All that does is make her stronger when she, I feel like she's already perfectly strong the way she is, so I wouldn't want to get her. I'm ever, I've also never been a fan of Gilgamesh, but... He's such a good unit that I wouldn't mind getting him. He also would uh, finish my collection for Fate Stay Night if I got him, so I'd be pretty pumped for that. As much as I was specifically talking crap about a lot of these specific three assassins, I wouldn't mind getting either one of them. I don't have them. They're very cute. Against specific units and specific content, they can be extremely good. Um, not everyone has my crazy box that can use a whole buttload of units, though. <laughs> so it's kind of kind of depend on the person. 
Uh, for Berserker, there's no one I would love more than Mama Raiko right here. Her or Kentucky, I would love so much. I would my I wouldn't mind Mysterious Heroine X Alter because she looks like a Jedi at the end. I would not want another Hichikata. I already have him MP2. I don't need MP3. I kind of don't have any feelings for rulers. I already have ruler quets of these. I would only really want Sherlock. But I don't need any more rulers is the basic thing. I already have two good rulers. I don't need a third. Um, Dantes, I wouldn't mind using. I do think it's kind of a bummer that I think you need an NP2 to get maximum potential out of him. But I'll use him regardless because he has a very good um, summer outfit. Yeah, look at that. That's good. I don't care who you are. That's good. Okay. Um, I don't want another Kiara because I think my Kiara is NP2. And the same Kogan, I don't want Okita because I already have Okita. I wouldn't mind Jean. I wouldn't mind Melt. Um, BB I already have. I wouldn't mind NP2 though because that makes her a little bit stronger. I wouldn't mind Abby and I wouldn't mind Hokusoi. So even general, like if you look at the, the units I don't want, it's like three or four or five. And the rest of them I wouldn't mind owning. I also don't really want Bright Nero, but that's because I have her NP2. Uh, MP3 would be funny, but I would personally would prefer a brand new unit. That's just me personally, though. Um, so yeah, that's the GSSR. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. In general, I would say any SSR is a good SSR if you're using them correctly. Um, and it can be pretty hard to get SSRs in some cases, especially for Fake Grand Order that has no pity system. It has a form of a pity, but it's really more of a a whale pity, I guess, is the nicest way of saying it, but eh, it is what it is. So that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. If you did, remember to hit that like button. I'll see you guys in the next one. I will see you for this summon, and I'll see you guys at New Year's. Goodbye, have a good day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.